Hello and welcome to this mini gem from the Association of Elderly Medicine Education. My name is Andrew McGregor and I'm a registrar in haematology and also part of the Team Heme Twitter group. Today we're going to talk about some of the important aspects of myeloma relating to the elderly population. Specifically we're going to talk about how to organise a serum protein electrophoresis, how to interpret the result and what to do with a positive result and then also go on to list some of the clinical features of myeloma and the basic therapeutic options available to patients with myeloma and also summarise some of the special care needed in myeloma patients. Firstly back to some of the basics. A monoclonal protein or an M protein or a paraprotein is basically an immunoglobulin secreted by an abnormally expanded clone of plasma or lymphoid cells. It's important to note that this abnormal clone will produce an immunoglobulin of one size only. These immunoglobulins can be consisted of light and heavy chains or light chains only. When they are heavy chains and light chains, they are normally IgG kappa or lambda or IgA kappa or lambda. IgE, D and M myelomas are extremely rare. It's important to note that if you find an IgM paraprotein, then it's most likely to be related to lymphoma. When performing serum protein electrophoresis, the patient's serum is placed across an electrical current and proteins will precipitate out depending on their size and electrical charge. There are various different zones in the electrophoresis which you can see here, but the zone that we're interested in is the gamma zone which contains all of the immunoglobulins. Here is an example of a normal serum protein electrophoresis with a smooth, diffuse gamma zone. Next is an example of an abnormal protein electrophoresis highlighted in red with a spike in the gamma zone due to a plasma cell population producing an immunoglobulin of one size. You should think of myeloma in elderly patients with normocytic normochromic anemia, hypercalcemia, bone pains or bony deformities, new onset renal failure or pathological fractures. Patients with raised ESR or raised total protein should also be investigated for the presence of a paraprotein. Less common presentations can be seen on the right hand side but it is important to not forget amyloid in elderly patients which can present with congestive cardiac failure, neuropathy and postural hypotension. Once you've performed serum protein electrophoresis and found a paraprotein band, it's important to then undergo basic blood workup with a full blood count and electrolytes including calcium. A haematologist will then perform a bone marrow aspirate and trephine biopsy and here you can see plasma cells are highlighted in red circles. Skeletal surveys are also used to look for any bony lesions and here you can see the characteristic punched out lesions in a skull x-ray. There are a number of other causes of a paraprotein other than myeloma, the most common being MGUS or monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance which does not require any treatment. It's important to note that non-Hodgkin lymphoma, specifically Waldron-Storm's macroglobulinemia, can also produce paraproteins along with extramedullary plasmacytomas, amyloid and the very rare POEM syndrome. MGUS is relatively common in the elderly population with up to 5% of 8 year olds having a small paraprotein found. The paraproteins here are generally small of less than 30 grams but most commonly less than 10 grams per litre. If a bone marrow biopsy is performed there will be less than 10% of plasma cells on the marrow. There is no end organ damage such as anemia, high calcium, renal failure or bone lesions and if any of these were present then the diagnosis would be myeloma. In addition to this there's no signs of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, no signs of amyloid and no signs of plasmacytoma. The prognosis is generally very good with MGUS with only 10% progressing to myeloma at 10 years. In summary, if you do find a paraprotein the patient will require usual blood workup and also assessment for bony pain lymphadenopathy, organomegaly, B symptoms, hyperviscosity type symptoms and also signs of amyloid. For all patients, haematology should be consulted for further advice on management and monitoring. Myeloma is a malignant expansion of plasma cells which produce a monoclonal immunoglobulin. There are around about 4,500 cases in the UK and the median age is 70 years old. It is generally incurable but can be controlled for many years. 
There are many new treatments available for myeloma and because of this it is seen as one of the malignancies with the most improved outcomes overall. The mainstay of treatment is combination chemotherapy involving a steroid chemotherapy and a novel agent. The novel agents often include lenalidomide, thalidomide or the proteasome inhibitor bortezomib. Bisphosphonates are used alongside these agents to improve bone health. In patients fit enough, stem cell transplantation is also used. If you have a patient on your ward with myeloma, it is important to take care with their renal function, which can deteriorate following the usage of NSAIDs or gentamicin. Also, myeloma patients are increased risk of infections due to hypogammaglobulinemia and can have neutropenic sepsis if they are on chemotherapy. If a patient is admitted to the acute medical take who is on active treatment for myeloma, it's important to look up their chemotherapy regime as certain side effects may be more prominent in patients on certain chemotherapy regimes such as venous thromboembolism in patients with thalidomide and lenalidomide. In conclusion, it's important to be aware of myeloma and to do this you need to understand the concept of the paraprotein and how to evaluate someone with a paraprotein. It's also important to know that patients with myeloma require special care and attention and it's also important to be able to perform baseline investigations to help diagnose myeloma. For further information please follow us on Team Heme or look at our website and also further information can be found on the British Committee for Standards and Haematology guidelines website.